That's it. We got a whole scene here behind the scenes making this happen. Let's go to the desk and start this party up. You guys ready? Let's go. Let's go do this. Boom. Yeah, all right. Good job so far. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody, to our fifth Hi. episode. Joey Restivo Live. Um, how's the mic? Are we good with the mic, Jose? Just picking us up nice and clean? All right. So, we're going to have a fun show today, guys. Uh, I want to welcome my, my co-host, I guess he became, David. Hi, I love you. Now, David, you realize last week... You're going to have to lower the volume on that, too. Okay. Yeah, you realize that last week, when we were interviewing Robert Renee, take that all the way down, all the way, um, you almost lost your job. Uh, I don't know if I still have it. I mean, you still got the job. I'm just not sure if we're going to pay you. I mean, you just don't stop coming to work. So, by definition, I don't have one. Well, by definition, you have one. It's just an apprentice. You got, you got, you got downgraded to an apprentice. Not that that's a downgrade. Mm -hmm. But for an architect mm -hmm. and a role model and an all-around great guy, mm -hmm. you're going back to you know to the okay. basics. So now I'm going to the basics. Are you paying me? No, you're an apprentice. I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So <clears throat> I understand that you and our guest today have a certain what? thing that has a certain thing to do with macaroni and cheese. What? Can you explain that one to us a little bit? He claims. He claimed that he is the king of macaroni and cheese. Based, based on his sponsorship for Kraft, which he never showed me any paper that says so, and he said they had, he appears in the, in the, in the Michelin, Michelin uh, travel guy with a three star just for making macaroni and cheese, which I don't believe, I had to see that too. He can fake it. I'm pretty sure you're gonna make me, send me a fake <laughs> edition of that to send a three star Michelin. What? That's easy, I can do that. So, what you're saying is you're prepared to have a cookout against Jerry Dorville. Yeah. All right. It's so a that... funny. It's a funny. I know the secret. I'm going to show you the secret. So you, you, all, you all are watching, everybody, you're going to be the king of macaroni and cheese. Oh, no. So you're going to take Jerry's king of macaroni yeah, and cheese title yeah. I'm gonna, I'm and give it to I'm them. I'm going to spread that secret around the world. I love it. All right. So let's, let's talk about this for a second, everybody. You know, I love bringing the people watching into the show with us. So what I want to talk about today is old school colognes. So I'd like you guys to message me two things. What cologne you're wearing now and what cologne and or perfume you used to rock when you were 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Do you understand? I do. Like I know me personally, I'm gonna show you guys. I have, I have a little presentation for you guys. So comment below. Let me know what kind of colognes you wear now and what you used to wear when you were a younger person, a younger version of you just coming up. I'm going to show you one of my all-time favorites. And I actually found this version at Walmart. It's a body spray. Dracar Noir. I remember that. Old school. <clears throat> Very old school. I swore to God I was the guy. And I wore this cologne, I'm going to say 16, 17, 18, 19, probably for five years straight because it smelled right on me. Yeah. As far as my chemistry. Mm -hmm. You want to squirt, David? Let's let's get a little squirt. All right, this is like a body spray, so it's going to be gone quick. All right, I want squirt for you guys too back home. If right? You get, uh, if you got bug problems in your house, buy it. That's very hurtful, David. So now another one, another one that I used to wear, but I still wear now. Another one that I used to wear, but I still wear now is a staple. This one, is a, this one is an American classic. Now, if you ask one of our guys, Alejandro, who's an unbelievable graphic designer, he's gonna tell you Curve is number one, two, and three in his book. Hey, can I get, a, can I get an amen, Alejandro? Come on, Alejandro. Now, ladies, if you're watching, Alejandro is single and looking to mingle. <laughs> what do you tell them about Curve? Let the people at home know Curve about Curve. It's an awesome uh, perfume. Did you say perfume? Or, uh, uh, cologne. Cologne. Yeah. Cologne. It's so, a uh, awesome cologne from the nineties. From the nineties, but it still smells great. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and it's gonna uh, what is it? Say it. You keep. Yeah. It's gonna keep that. You using it? Yeah. It's gonna keep going. What I'd like you to do, Alejandro, real quick, do me a favor. I want you in Spanish yeah. to tell our fans back home. Now, a lot of girls love that Latin lover 
kind of vibe, right? Yeah. So I want you to tell them in your dark, deep, sexy voice, introduce yourself, yeah. and tell them they're welcome here anytime and you hope to meet them soon, but in Spanish. Okay. And make it sexy, Alejandro. Okay. Uh, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It's okay. Bring your sexy in. Bring your sexy in. And you had to bring you had to bring a dollar to the to the table. Oh yeah, the, the swear yeah. jar. Oh okay, yeah. okay. Uh, bueno, mi nombre es Alejandro. Uh, how do you speak y, um, a todos los que están allá, los esperamos por aquí, cuando quieran. Eh, Alejandro, let me, let me do something. I want you to imagine. Now, I got to tell you guys at home, and I'm going to call Alejandro out. I'm going to make him embarrassed, but I love him. He's my guy. <laughs> Alejandro has one of the deepest crushes on one of our artists that's coming down this week. So, Alejandro, what I want you to do yeah. is I want you to talk to the camera like you're talking to Ikey. And I want you to say, Ay, mi amor, mi nombre es Alejandro. Blah, 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 blah. What? Make it sexy. You know, the Latin lover oh. routine. Show him, David, show him. Oh, I, it's okay, Alejandro, have fun with me. He's shy. He's shy, ladies. So if you like a shy guy, this is Alejandro. Okay, okay David is a little more freaking crazy. But bring the bass in your voice. Mi amor. <clears throat> All of that. Hello, Aki. I am Alejandro. <laughs> and I'm coming for you. In Spanish, David. Fuck. Do I have to say it in Spanish? Yeah. Ay, mi amor. Hola, Iki. Soy Alejandro. Cuando vengas, voy a hacer una delicia contigo. Vas a conocer al caballero más apuesto, más gentil y más cálido que a veces conocido okay. en tu vida. Now I'm gonna show you something. You want another try? Yeah. You want another try, Alejandro? But now remember, mm. we have a lot of beautiful American girls, yeah. right, out there, and a lot of them just love the Latin boys. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. You're a strong Latin male. You're a rocker, yeah. right? You got great tattoos. You're talented, and he's almost really rich. So all you gotta do, this is your chance to shine. Just say hello, but bring it. I just missed one thing. You missed a lot of things. Go ahead, Alejandro. It's your time. Don't listen to him. Yeah. Yes. 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 You know what? Let me do one. Slide over, David. Let me do one. Watch. Check it out. Hola, mi amor. Hola, bebecita. Mi nombre es Alejandro. Soy soltero. Mi amor. You understand? Or maybe like this, Alejandro. Like, Wait, like I was getting ready to. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. just be sexy with him. I, I, you got another shot. I, I trust don't, you. I don't, you don't don't have that, sexy like. I don't. No. You don't have I it. Don't, I don't have that 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 spark of, of that. You don't have it. No. Okay. What? Alejandro is actually a very good man. He's looking for a girlfriend, one solo girl. So if you're single, listen to me. If you're a single girl out there and you want a handsome Colombian boy, this is your guy. Just inbox us, send us messages, and that's gonna be fine. But you know what I noticed, Alejandro? You did a great job. Thanks, boss. Whitney, where's Whitney at? Thanks, boss. Whitney, come on in. Chama Mazota. This is, this is the Joey Restivo Live single portion of the show. Yeah. This is our single segment, right? Hi, Whitney. Hi, Joey. Hi, good you? to see you. Oh, good. Okay, good to see you. <laughs> Whitney, now listen, guys, this is Whitney. Go ahead, Whitney. Say hello to them in Spanish. Hello. I'm Spanish. Hola. No, but, but más cariñoso. Hola. Hola. <laughs> but zoom in on Whitney. Let him see Whitney. She's sexy. Yeah. Okay, but Whitney. All right. Could we lower the music a little bit? Check this out. Okay, here we go. So something like this. Hola, mi amores. Mi nombre es Whitney Sita. <laughs> but this is important. Okay? And just tell them something about yourself. About me. About you, but it's Spanish. And make it sound sexy. Make it sound sexy. Go ahead, Whitney, get them. You ready? Let's get the music below. Yeah, but you can use your thumb thing and then. Yeah, go ahead. Wink. Yeah, see, I'll make the camera Go ahead. Con las dos manos. Yeah, no. <laughs> Como quieres. How you want, mama? Yeah, well. Wait, let's get the music nice and sexy low. Yes. Bring it, okay. Whitney. 
Hola, me llamo Whitney. Mi amor es, be sexy. Yeah. <laughs> I can be sexy like you. No, it's that's true. It's true. It's a, it's un don. Thank you, mama. <laughs> But listen to me. I'll talk for you. Just move your mouth. You ready? Just move your mouth. Come here. No. Just move your mouth. I'll talk. Watch. Focus on Whitney. The camera, oh, okay. la camera and Whitney. La camera and Whitney. Cerca, más cerca. Come on, close up. Is he drunk? All right, you ready? Yeah. You just move your mouth, I'll talk. Okay. You ready? Here we go. Más cerca, Clo closer. Okay. Hola, mi amores. My name is Whitney. I'm very sexy. I'm a Latina. I'm 26 years old. And I'm soltera, which means I'm alone. So many nights, <laughs> I look at Facebook to find my one true love. Maybe it's you, or maybe it's you. But call me, or message my king, Mr. Joey, the sexy man with steve -O, and we can make this happen, mi amor. I love you. Throw him a kiss, Whitney. Mwah. Yes, good job, good job, Whitney. Good job. <laughs> Good job, girl. <laughs> But she missed it. Wink, wink. It's all right, David. David gets jealous when Whitney's here because he thinks he's he thinks he's the sexiest one in the office. Yeah. Right? Which is cool. So let's get back to the cologne. I'm pretty sure I look better in the tongue that she Oh, what'd you say, David? I couldn't hear I'm pretty you. Sure I look better in a thong than she does. Okay, okay, so what David said is he's pretty sure he looks better in a thong than Whitney does. Thank God we don't have a human resources company uh, department here. Right. All right, so let's get back to this really quick. Let's get control of this, okay? So, do we get any messages from anybody on what their yes. colognes were? Let's read some out. Let's, let's get some shout outs here. Um, Whitney, you have supporters. Uh, Shirley Gantry say, poor Whitney. Uh, uh, hello to Ghislaine Morel. Right now she's joining us in the live. Uh, we have Alejo Mejia. Who is Alejo Mejia? Who is this guy? Who let him in? I'm gonna block him. Tell me about some colognes, David. Uh, let me watch right here. As I remember a comment about the drug car. And also, he told about the Dracar and the Old Spice. Just like Old Spice, all yeah, right. Yeah. See, now what I think Old Spice is, I think Old Spice is when you didn't have your own cologne and you broke into your dad's medicine cabinet and you pulled that little cool white bottle out, pulled off the top because it wasn't a spray back then, and you put it here and here and here and everywhere you're going to put it because that's what we did as kids. We didn't know what the hell we were doing, but we still managed to do it. You know, another one was called Aqua Velva. I remember that too. Aqua Velva, I remember, just smelled great. You, you smelled like you were trying to be sexy, even though you were just a kid. And to me, it was fantastic. Any cologne it seemed back then was better than no cologne. What else? Yeah. Any more shout outs we on have, the cologne? Yeah, we have Meredith that said, I wear uh, Mademoiselle Chanel, and when I was younger, I wore Hop. But I don't know if it's hop with a J. I think it's with an H. Ah, Jope, Jupe. I remember that. It was like an orange bottle. First of all, shout out to Meredith. I went to high school with Meredith, and she's one of these ladies that was a girl, and she looks the same as she was in, when she was in high school. Very sexy blonde. A little crazy, but that's what makes girls more interesting, let's face it. And uh, shout out to Meredith. She yeah. wears Chanel right now, and then, wait a second. She wears Chanel right now, and she's wear Jupe. Now, I got a Chanel perfume right here that I like. This one's pretty cool. It's platinum. I wear this one for special occasions. But you know, I don't like to stray too far from what I'm used to wearing, because then you're stuck all night if you're not getting those compliments and you're not vibing. I also got Cartier. You want to know something? Stevie B actually turned me on to this. Shout out to my man Stevie B who just recently had a birthday, April 19th. We love you, Stevie. You're a legend. You're a great human being. You're a humanitarian. Hell of an entertainer. Stevie B, when I first got onto the Freestyle Explosion Tour by Pacific Concert Group, It was his birthday, and I went and I bought him a clone. I said, any clone you want? He goes, oh, no, Mr. Bang. Joe Bang now. Don't offer to buy Stevie to me. Cologne now, because I wear the good stuff. I don't wear that curve. I wear the good stuff. I'm like, what do you mean, Stevie? He goes, I wear Creed. Joe, you want up your game? You better get Creed. So, Stevie, I got Creed. I don't remember. This one is called Silver Mountain Water, and it's absolutely delicious. Shout out to the birthday boy, Mr. Stevie B. Let me talk about this one really quick, too. All right? This one's Versace. 
And my boy Anthony Primo Fontana turned me on to this. I can't afford that. No, you probably can't, but especially as an apprentice. But this cologne smells great on Anthony, but it just smells okay on me. It's not it's not delicious on me like it is on him. Which brings me to another cologne. Two colognes my father used to wear. Which one? And they were unbelievable. One was called Grey Flannel, and the other one was called Azaro or Quorum. I don't remember what it was. Quorum, I remember. You remember that? Yeah. They smelled great on my dad, but on me, my chemistry just from didn't support it. Quorum, uh, the Quorum from Puig, I remember. I don't remember. I really don't. And then we got Aqua de Gio, which is really Aqua de Jo, because I was pronounced <laughs> Izzy Miyaki, little CK1. I remember my second cologne was a world famous green bottle with a golden horse on it and it was polo uh, mm -hmm. the polo cologne and it was un <laughs> when i tell you that smelled woodsy and delicious polo cologne is also in the house and then just one last thing shout out to my friend Rachel from california i can't even read this i got these two right here and i will never spend this much money on colognes again it's personalized cologne. This one was $489 plus tax, and this was like, I don't know, like a hundred and something dollars plus tax. I'll never spend that money on, it's ridiculous. But when I tell you it smells so delicious and it lasts, get a close up on this. I don't know if they could see it or not. Anyway. And you can only get it at like Bloomingdale's or one of them. Anyway, here we go. So what other, what do we got? Let's give there some shout-outs. We shout have Delania. Shout-out shout out for Delania. Shout-out to Delania. What's up, bro? Delania says she uses exclamation perfume. Exclamation? Yeah. I'm sure if Delania wears it, it's got to be delicious. And Tracy, Tracy Lee says she like Cure cure for Women. Cure for Women? Yeah, Cure for Women. What's up, Tracy? She wears Cure for Women. That's a good one. Uh, Tony Gibson. Uh, shout out from Coral Springs, Florida, in the house. Tony Gibson, Coral Springs is in the house. What? What else we got? Uh, we got Shirley, Shirley, Shirley Gentry. Gentry. Say it louder promotions. Shout out to David Palermo, who's in the studio right now working on some new music. Chase your dreams, party people. If you want it, you got to go get it. That's it. Nobody's going to do the work for you. Shout out to David, the bad boy. Uh, we have Lauren Lopez, Ike Rio. Oh, Lauren's giving Ikea a shout out. Yeah. Well, let me break really quick from the cologne thing. Keep reading these things and we'll come right back, okay? Okay. Check this out. So, we got a pretty busy week. We've been working all week on, on uh, Robert Renee's videos. We shot two great videos a week and a half ago. And uh, now, this week, I'm extremely delighted to announce that my girl and my homeboy, Ike and Frank Garcia, are coming down to South America. We're gonna see him this weekend. We have a few photo shoots set up. We have some choreography rehearsals with the court with the dancers, and then we're starting to shoot two new music videos. I'm not gonna tell you the names of the songs right now because we're gonna save that for next week when Ike and Frank will be my guests and we'll be on the balcony at Icon Suites doing next week's Joey Restivo Live, but I am delighted. Ike is ready, she's looking great, she's so excited, she told me to tell all her fans she loves you, thank you for the support, please share everything she does, and Ike is coming for you summer of 2021. Pure and simple. All right, let's get some more shout outs. Sally Sol said, Do you remember that Italian cologne looked like a pine cone? The Italian cologne. First of all, shout out to my man Sally Sal, gangster, always in the house. The, the Italian cologne that looked like a pine cone? You know, that might have actually been pine cones that growing up in Brooklyn we would break and rub it on ourselves. You break a pine cone in half and you get a, a pretty cool smell. You're going to get a rash. There's no doubt about it. You're going to get a rash. So Sally Sal, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't claim to be. Check with your dermatologist. So you, you always have been an environmental friend. I'm an environmentalist, yes. Yeah. Yes, I am. I guess. Thank you, Sally Sal. Great question. I don't remember. When you find out, send it back to us. It sounds familiar, but... Go ahead, what else we uh, got? Chilean, Chilean to say, so you used to, I used to love Egyptian musk. <gasps> oh Egyptian God. musk. All right. Let's talk about Egyptian musk really quick. Shirley Gentry, listen to me carefully. When we were recording, when we were doing pre-production on our second album, that's we as in Linear, um, we stayed in Manhattan. And in Manhattan, you could buy for 5 and $10 these little bottles of Egyptian musk oil. And when I tell you it is one of my all-time favorites, 
It's a sexy, lovely smell, but it smells especially great in the winter time when it's cold or a little chilly outside. Egyptian musk, fantastic. And I'm not talking about the one from Jovan, like the white Egyptian musk. I'm talking about the, the, the Egyptian musk in the oils. Great, great, wow, that's old school. Okay, what else we got? Okay. You have Cherry Costello, you say, cool water smells nice. Cool water smells nice. Cheryl, we love you, we hope you're feeling better, girl. You're an amazing supporter of freestyle music, pop music, just all music in general. And you show so many of us artists so much love. I love you, I hope you're doing great. Cool water is absolutely delicious. David, we're gonna spray this one on you too. Oh, thank you. There you go, you're gonna smell like a real whore when we're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay? So, yeah, cool water is delicious, especially after it sits, like you spray cool water and like 20 minutes later it just starts mixing with just chemistry and, and smells great. Hey guys, really quick, one Joey tip to you. What I love doing, especially Remember? when I was living in Florida. Remember the I have insurance. All, all this girl is gonna come from me. You, you know where? You're on thin ice again. Thing? You're on thin ice again, David. You might lose your apprenticeship job if you keep jumping over me. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you want me to fire him, all you gotta do is say the word. I'm up to here right now. I love them. No. So anyway, here's my tip before I was so rudely interrupted. Okay. Sorry. You take your cologne. So if Curve is the cologne you like, don't buy a big bottle of cologne. Buy two small bottles. Keep one in your car. Let that sun beat it down because it makes it more rich in it. It makes it more full bodied. Keep it in your car for six months and then use it. And the other one, you know, just use as you need it. That's all I'm just telling you. Okay, David, some more shout outs. Thank you so much. I'd like to give a special shout out right now to Felix who's working our, our, uh, our sound bites. He's our sound effect guy. Yeah, of course. That's the only time he's gonna be on cue. It's the only time. <laughs> Great job, Felix. Yeah. What do we got? Meredith Gale says she, she uses uh, Calvin Klein Euphoria for men. Try it. Uh, ah. That's our, our recommendation. For you. you know, Meredith, you now would be considered a cougar, right? Still sexy. You could be my sugar mama. You want to send me that? I will gladly accept it. Do you understand? What? What? Thank you so much, Meredith. What else? Who do we got? Uh, Maria Artino is watching right now. Okay. What's Roy, up, Maria? Roy B. Roy B. Oh, I love Roy B. Roy B is the manager of Company B. You guys remember Company B, right? Beautiful girls. They're awesome performers. Shout out to Roy B. Roy B is my one of my co-hosts on, or my co-members, I don't know, whatever, on... Marcella Olivar's Powerhouse Bombshells Men Talk Therapy, along with Frank Garcia, and we just got a, we got an enormous cast. So, what's up, Roy B? Thanks for showing some love, brother. Also, Benny Gonzalez, um, Roy B. We have my mind is just a blank right now, but we have a great, great cast. Go ahead. Who else we got? We have Johnny Parco. Johnny Parco always shows us so much love, but I think Johnny Parco is here for our special guest host today. So shout out to you, Johnny, always showing us love. Who else we got? Give me uh, some comments. Yeah, we have, uh, remember Timothy, he, he talked about the, the pine cone. That was Sally Sal. Uh, well, that's, uh, Timothy Ryan says, Salpino Silvestri. That should be Salpino a Silvestri. All right, so that's from who? That's from Timothy. Timothy's an old school friend of mine. Timothy, you're a gentleman, and thank you so much for all the positive messages you send me all the time. It's a little bit hot. I'm gonna take this shirt off. I wore this for Jerry D, but it's a little hot. So I'll just put it back on when Jerry comes back in, okay? Okay. All right, who else we got? We Let's got give... Jamie, Jamie or Hami Rinaldi. She says, oh, 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 wait a minute. You didn't even catch that. Hold on. David, hold on a second. I'm sorry. Help me here, David. Give me this. Is this inside out? Yes. Turn it the right way in. All right, we're going to do this right. That's actually hysterical. Let's do this right. Thank you, David. All right, hold on. Let's take that back for a second. Hold on. Now, because we're doing this live, and then we're going to edit it for YouTube, we're going to do this the right way. Okay, you ready? Okay. Oh, my God. It's really hot right now. It it's really hot. I think... Let me, let me take my shirt off. Maybe I can keep my job like that. So that's... On the Joe Restivo Live Show, that's how you take your shirt off. I totally forgot. I'm sorry. I had to play it up for the cameras. Actually, you know what? I'm a little thirsty. I think I want something to drink, too. I'm parched. Oh. 
I think I'm thirsty. I'd like Alexander. I think I'm thirsty. I'd like something to drink real quick. I want the George Michael. I want the Wham song. Listen, it's our fifth episode, and we're going to have many, many technical difficulties, but I promise you one thing. By the time we get to our 10th episode, we will be a force to reckon with. We will stomp out all these little things that get in our way. And we're going to have this thing stone cold by the 10th episode. Mark my words. So let's take this again. Take three. Hey, David. Yep. I'm really thirsty. I want to get something to drink. Okay, I feel better now. Thank you so much. All right, you know what we're going to do? <laughs> Jose. I don't even know if I could wait anymore, Joselito, because our next guest is someone that lived in our house since he was 16 years old. Lived with my family, and I'm honored to call this next guest my brother. And really, I cannot say enough about Jerry Dorville. Number one, he's a gentleman. He's a pure, pure soul. He's hysterical. He's real. He's worked with so many talented artists. And if you met Jerry on the street, you wouldn't even know about his accomplishments in life. But he's rubbed elbows with the biggest and the best of them all. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome to this show my man, Mr. Jerry D. Now, when I tell you Jerry's family, Jerry is absolutely family. And my parents raised him just like they raised us. And if I got out of line and I was wrong, I'd be the one that got in trouble. They wouldn't side with me because I came from their loins. So all I need to tell you is Jerry is, he's just a human being that graces this earth with his presence. All right, now we're waiting for Jerry to come on, so we should be on really soon. Are we ready to introduce Jerry D? You know what I'd like to do before we put Jerry on the camera? Let's play Jerry's video. Can we play Jerry's video? I want the people to do this. Now, a lot of people growing up would associate Jerry and me with P. Diddy and Biggie Smalls. I mean, I don't even know if it's because Jerry's just so much bigger than me or what the heck it is, but let's play that video on Jerry D real quick, and then we're gonna, and then Jerry D, talk to, me, up, baby? talk to me really quick. Uh, tell me some of the people that you've worked with in any capacity in the music industry. Oh, wow. Um, well, uh, shoot, I started out with Mr. B from 1989. Now, when you say Mr. B, who's that? Tell the people at home just in case they don't know who you are. Mr. CBB, uh, since I was 19, kind of pretty much set my career off and put me in the mix with working with all the bars. Um, I did some shows with, I did a lot of shows with CNT Music Factory, Factory with Freedom Williams. Shout out to Freedom. Freedom's a straight Fire gangster. Man. Yes, he is. And I toured around the world with uh, the MTV tour uh, when it had Tony, Tony, Tony. It had, B, you know, had BBD out there. BBD meaning? Um, and I would work for the Salt. Bell Live the Bell. Right. BBD. 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 Remember oh, those? Uh, that girl is poison. <laughs> poison. Yeah. Smack it up, you know, flip that, it, rub it down, Jerry D. You know, and then I worked with my homeboy, Toga, where we did some, to you know, where we did a record label. I worked for him at Summit Entertainment. And then I went off to work with uh, Spotlight Records. I was on the Potty Gram and became a VP over there. 
Um, and then I worked with, uh, let's see. Uh, Jackson 5. Well, you know, it's a lot of different uh, stuff with video. A lot, of, a lot of different aspects of the industry that I've learned and people that I've worked with that taught me a lot. And what about Elder Barge? Uh, Elder Barge was a unique situation. <laughs> yeah, but you worked with him. You were on tour with him. You went around. Uh, you know, but you know, we have like confidentiality clause that you know we can't state. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it moving. <laughs> How our tour went, but it was good. We did a lot of shows. I learned a lot, and then I traveled overseas with uh, L and Stevie, and Brazil. Got to see a lot of the world, and working with you uh, with Lanier. As well, you know, my main man since I was a uh, young tyke, <laughs> young and little, little snot nosed Jerry D. So, little snot nosed Jerry D. <laughs> let's let's fast forward because you know, a lot of times you work production with the uh Pacific Concert Group, right? Yep, you worked with you had a lot of Natalie. Had a lot of the staging, yep, you did a lot with of with Natalie RJ. Okay, so let's fast forward to. Dorville Entertainment. Like, tell me about that. Well, since I've been in the industry so long, I get a lot of emails and a lot of calls on what should I do? How should I uh, approach this? How, uh, where, where can I connect with the person that can help me move along with my project? So, you know, I was, I was pretty much helping people out, you know, people that I love that are my closest friends. But then it started to become more and more of a business for me because um, a lot of a lot of the emails that I was getting were people like saying, "Yo, please help me out. I need to get to the next level." And uh, Dorville Entertainment League became a project of mine, a pet project of mine that I introduced uh, to a lot of different people. Um, I introduced it to uh, to a lot of different management companies that uh, that it was a very interesting idea to bring them in and pretty much teach people what, what aspects of what to do and not to do. So that way their career could actually move forward from marketing, marketing campaigns, you know, from production campaigns, getting the right songs, getting the, getting it into the right people's hands, uh, budgeting. So that way you're able to actually have a project to, to approach someone with. Well, you know, I know that the Dorville Entertainment Link, because of you, you have a tremendous amount of resources and friends in the entertainment business. And, and contacts. They are, and your contacts, they're actually, that's your connection. And I, I could say this freely to the world. Dorval Entertainment Link teamed up with Artists at Play. And you were very instrumental in helping us write and produce some music for Robert Rene and then bringing Robert and Rene back to South America last week and producing mm -hmm. two videos, two music videos. Well, I saw, I saw a lot of talent in Robert. He was actually one of the dancers that I had picked for your tour that I had brought down when you made the final decision to put everybody in. But uh, after the tour that was coming towards the end, I, I was like, Robert, you're a very talented person. You should uh, pursue being an artist you know and then uh, a couple months a couple months ago and we were talking about it and i i mentioned him to you and you're like well let's see if he would be one of those artists that we can work with to uh to bring out to the public yeah and and just and, to and, be... then and then so so we uh, worked with him for a few songs and then he he brought the goods that's right and just to be just to be clear you saw something in Robert that Robert believed he had, but didn't have the uh, didn't have the confidence to bring to the forefront, and that you saw a work ethic, you saw a uh -huh. desire to be bigger and better, and take a dream and make it reality. So I, I commend you for that, Jerry. When somebody, when you get behind somebody, though, you have this you have this force behind you that's going to make them go one way or the other because if you believe in somebody, you're going to drive them all the way through. And, and I respect that a lot about you. And the truth is, I might not even have paid attention until you told me, hey, Joey, his work ethic, his talent, ah, da, 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 da. And I says, you know what? I love Robert. 
let's see. And then we had our conversations, you know, because it's nothing just happens overnight. It has to be planned out. And when I realized right. Robert was ready to go all the way, that's when we started going serious on him. And now we shot two great music videos, and it's a Dorval Entertainment link, Artists at Play collaboration for Robert Renee. And, and you did a great job all the way through. Now, if you're there looking, you know, watching this video, whether it's live or if it's on YouTube or Facebook later on, uh, reach out to Jerry if you have any real questions, because as an artist, you only know what you can research on YouTube and what you can read in books and ask other friends. But Jerry Dorville has a wealth of knowledge that comes from years, decades and decades of experience. And if you get Jerry behind you, you got a way better shot of success because Jerry Dorville will get the job done, period. I will, I will do my best to make sure that you are treated the way you should be treated. That's right. You do your 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 uh, you protect the artists. Why why is that? Well, they're the, they're the bread and butter of the industry. You know what I mean? They they're the ones that are supplying us with jobs. You know, to be able to feed other families. You know, without without the artists, there's no stage manager. There's no light guys. There's no road crew. There's no management company. There's no venues. It's true. Let's do this really quick, Jerry. Let's see if any of Jerry's fans are out there, like Johnny Parko. Let's see if anybody's sending Jerry some shout-outs. <laughs> well, I got a lot of family out there with a lot of love. A lot of people and, love you, Jerry. And I love them as well. And, you know, and my thing is, is um, I don't yes, hate man. on anyone. Yes, uh, Hold on, Jerry's talking. One, one second. Say again, Jerry, you don't you hate know, on anybody? I, don't I know. Think we don't we don't hate on no one you know i think everybody has an opportunity to show their talents and if you don't like their talent you don't like their talent but you know they have to have quality out there they have to you know they have to bring their a game to be taken seriously that's right and if you don't have and if you don't have that you know don't waste your time your money or your energy or you're gonna you're gonna feel bad at the end of the day because Nobody is looking at your YouTube. Nobody's looking at your Facebook. You know, you got to put the work in. Yeah, you got to put the work in. It's true. And, you know, there are people out there that are shady. They're not nice. Let me, let me, let me say something because yep. this whole week I got a few messages about my appearance. Uh, and let me clear it up while I got you on the phone. So we're shooting two videos on Ike <laughs> next week. And <clears throat> one of them is a song just on Ike, and then the other one is a duet. It's Ike featuring me on a song. And right. this song, we're going with the international pop dance Latin vibe. So that's why I grew out this facial hair. You know, I'm trying it out. I don't usually like having facial hair because I feel like I look like I'm really intense. And I'm also growing out my hair. So you're going to see me looking like a mess this whole week and last week because I'm trying to bring a different vibe for this next well, video we're shooting. It's looking good on you. It's looking good on you. It's looking good. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. This is actually because of you. You're the one that suggested for this next video, change up my vibe a little bit. Just like Madonna. Just like Cher. Right. You know, they change their vibe up. They they adapt and they, they bring new, just new heat, new passion to different songs. And I also yeah. got some you questions. Took it to a whole other level, young man. Yeah. <laughs> But that, it, it's, you took it all on the level. I told you to get a little gritty, but then you went and got tattooed, tattooed up. And but what I, I did, was like, oh my God, who are you? Well, no, what I did, Jerry, is you remember I had that big tattoo on my chest, and I've been wanting, right. I've for, been wanting, for mom. To, I've been for my mom, a tribute to my mom, and I got one down here. It's a tribute to my dad, and uh, and I've wanted to expand on that, but I never have the time. You see how much I'm working constantly. Right. Like we work in the right. office. We work in the office eight hours a day. And then I usually work with David another four hours. And then I start working on music and, and writing and, and doing stuff like that with Key. And my mind is constantly going, you know? But if, if people ask some questions, so let me just show you guys. So this was my initial tattoo right here. Let me see. What? Right? With my mom, it says Queen Eileen. And then there's little secret symbols in there that I used to say to my mom. And then I expanded on the tattoo. Let me take this out. And this Jesus, has, it's got, it's got the flower of life on it, you know, it's, and it's cool. I've been wanting to do it and I had the time and I did it. And 
for me, it's, it's a spiritual tattoo. Uh, it's a tribute to the people that I love, and it means something to me. And awesome. anybody that goes out there and gets a tattoo, you can get whatever you want. Try to make it mean something that's going to fuel your spirit for the rest of your life, which means if you get down and you look down at that tattoo, maybe that tattoo means something to you that gives you the extra energy to push you through and get you where you want to be. All right, so let's take some shout-outs, Jerry. These, so just so you guys know, my appearance is changing because <clears throat> like an actor, I'm changing my vibe for the next video that I'm going to be doing so I can give you guys another facet, another side of Joey Restivo. You get what I'm Thank you, guys. So, and, and also, let me, say, so let me say one more thing. You know, when I was a kid, the music was easy because I was a young man. And as I got older, my music and lyrics are reflecting life as I went through it. Do you know? And, and, and if you're one of my fans, you follow me, you, you know my struggle with my mom and dad passing. And I use that to fuel, however I can, my future and my goals and my dreams because it's the hardest thing to deal with. The numbing reality of somebody that you love, you will never be able to touch them again or talk to them, or hear their voice. It's a struggle. So everything I do, I do for me, the people I love, the people that love me, you guys back there, because let's face it, some people have to work regular jobs, and they can live vicariously through us with the videos and the music and the concerts, and right. I'm fighting the good fight for the people that believe in me and, and believe in the things that I'm doing, and I hope you guys love it. And thank you, Jerry, for motivating me to grow my hair out, Try a beard, right? I got to shave down a little bit. I'm going to try something a little different for the video. But you forced me also to go out of my comfort zone and take a chance. Right, you, have to, you have to be unique. You can't, you can't be the same, the same clean, clean cut, pretty guy that you always are. Well, I am pretty. You There's know? no doubt about that. Yeah, when I'm alone in my room, stuff. sometimes I stare at the wall. Like, <laughs> those were the young days in the closet. You in the closet? <laughs> What do you mean by that? Yeah, you know, at, at your house, we used to be in the closet but with the mirror. First we're of all, we're doing our dance routines. Just for the record, the only thing in my closet are my dresses and my high heels. <laughs> Shout out, <laughs> rest in peace to my brother, Charles Christopher. He used to say that back <laughs> in the day. I used to love it. Charles was openly gay. You know, I'm not gay, but right. Charles was gay and, sure? and, uh, what? No, I think your uh, your counterpart has a problem. He's got a lot your of problems, David, and he's got a problem with you. Know, you. David's got well, many problems. Well, I heard, I heard uh, that he had a challenge that was set. You know, as you can see on my Facebook, I'm a hell of a cook, and uh, I heard that David was going to challenge me on um, my macaroni and cheese. Is but I think he got it misunderstood. I think he got it misunderstood that. Uh, he was my macaroni and cheese. Okay, so wait, you're going to have to clear it up because David couldn't hear you. You didn't have the headphones on. So what you said is, David's got a problem. He thinks he wants right. to challenge you to a macaroni and cheese bake-off. Correct. And what did you but say after he, that? But, well, I think he, he got it confused because I was calling him the macaroni and cheese. So you were telling David he's your hey, macaroni and cheese. Sorry. Yeah. I don't understand what that means, Jerry. Can you please hey, explain? Hey, Joey, guess who I just got on the phone right now? I got Charlie Rodriguez on the phone. You got chicken. Who do you got on the phone? You got chicken. Charlie you got Rodriguez. Chicken. I can't hear you. Charlie Rodriguez is on the phone with me right now. So bring him on. Let's put him up. Get him on speaker. Get him on I, video. I don't, I don't know how to put him up. He called me on the other phone, but uh, let me just talk to him real quick and see what... Oh, what yeah, yeah. Don't worry about a live show. Go talk to that guy. It's okay. Charlie All Rodriguez right, hold on. is great. Can you hear, you hear him? You. It's okay. Can you hear him? Can you hear him? Can you hear Charlie? Let's see. Hello, hello, testing one, two, three. Oh, we can hear him. We got him. Hey, Jerry, just put the earpiece, your earpiece of your phone, by the speaker to the the top part of your phone, so we can hear him. All right. What's up, okay, Charlie hey. Rodriguez? How you doing? Hey, bro, you know how it is. Another day putting out fires. That's what I get paid to do. I'm a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I know. besides promoting concerts, you also run a hospital. 
That's right. And that's where I put the fires out. Amen. Brother. <laughs> you want to be important, you got to be able to put out fires, man. These jobs should come with hoses and fire extinguishers. You know, manage, man, managing all sorts of things, man, you know. Awesome. Hey, Charlie, tell us about your show real quick on the 22nd of May. Yeah. Hey, Charlie, tell them about the show. Tell us about your show on May 22nd. Who do you got on the lineup? Uh, who is this? It's Joey. Uh, no, 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 a food vendor. Oh. Um, who's on the line? Uh, let's see, a TKA. Uh, it's the usual people. TKA, Coro, Judy, Judy Torres, uh, Lime. You got Cynthia on there. Cynthia. You got George Anthony on there. It's the, the regular people. Awesome. You know, the family. And where's it going to be? Miramar Amphitheater. All right, good. You expecting a big crowd? What's capacity? What can you get in that place now with the COVID going on? And maximum is 2,500. That's still a great show. We welcome that with open arms for the simple fact that we've all been pretty much sterilized for one year. <laughs> yeah, bro. I want to know. This thing's going to sell out, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like 75%, and I got a month to go. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, I know that the freestyle fans and the dance fans, you know, we've been waiting for a big mega show in a beautiful outdoor venue with beautiful music so we can start going back to the life we used to know, the old school concerts, the vibe that brings us back to the 1980s and 90s. Oh, well, you know, they, my bro, these people, they... Oh, these people have been going to my parties, bro, year after year for 30 years now. And this is another one. And then the next one I do is another one. And they just keep coming. Amen. You know, I, I know awesome. everybody by first base, first name basis. <laughs> you know, I've got their phone numbers. I got their emails. I know I know the name of their sons, their, their daughters. So let me ask you a question. It's, it's a big, it's a living room party is what I call it. That sounds great, but... My boy Johnny Quest also deals with something similar. How do you deal with the fact that this is a business and it has real tangible expenses? How do you deal with all the people that want free tickets and backstage passes constantly? They don't get it. I have no problem with it. The answer is no. <laughs> Everybody pays. <laughs> no, bro, I, I, I've already, I'm, I'm done with that already. It's, it's zero. Yeah, it's got it's got you know, to be because and, and they pay. You don't want to pay, then go home. That's yeah. it. Well, because if you, you don't know, pay, the tickets know? are going to sell out, and then you can't even buy a ticket to get in. That that's what I want. That's exactly what I want. Sorry, you waited too long. Yeah, you waited too long. And it's almost there. Seventy-five percent of the way, and it's almost sold out. So yeah, everybody needs to get I their tickets. People, hey, you know, when when I go to the dentist, you charge me full price. Correct. Yeah, it's true. Publix doesn't give you anything for free except for them little samples, which is very much like crack because they know those samples they give you, you're going to want to buy that package, right? So, yeah, everybody pays, baby. So we're excited. We're following your advertisements on the upcoming concert. I think it's a great lineup. I think it's a great time in May, and I think everybody's going to have a wonderful time. And I know Jerry said he's thinking about coming in for that, right, Jerry? Jerry, did we lose Jerry? All right. Well, when Jerry comes back in, we're gonna uh, we're gonna bring him back up. Let me know. So let's get some more shout outs. What do we got here, David? Let's see. Let's give some of the shout outs here. We got right here. Tracy Lee. Laura Squad, uh, we got Paul Brown. Uh, say, yeah, we know Jerry will bring us some great talent. Jerry definitely brings great talent because Jerry puts his name behind everything he does and his reputation. Yeah, okay, basically, is. Can we go a little quicker, David? You're really relaxed yeah. right now, huh? You really think you're in your bedroom looking at your Facebook? I wish. Pornhub? Let's God, go. I, love. I know you do. Let's go. <laughs> I remember. Oh, what is that? What does that say? David get paid? What? Yeah. Listen what? to me. You know what I'm going to do for you, David? We're yeah. going to go out. We're going to get you one of them carts, and we're going to make you sell mangoes and masa mora. 
To sell it on the street? In the street, in the car. That's going to be fun. Yeah. So if you were going to sell mangoes, how would you walk outside to announce that you're on the street selling your mangoes? Mango Tommy, Mango Tommy, Mango, Mango. Right. Maduro, Dulce, Mango. What about Masamora? Masamora, Masamora, Masamora. But you need the whistle. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's how they oh, do it up you. and down the streets. That's how. Masamora, paraguas, sombrillas, paraguas, which is selling umbrellas. You got talent. I do got talent. So if this all fails, which is the way it looks right now by our numbers, I'll start getting myself a cart Eric and selling the streets. Eric Valdez. say Jerry D. Eric Valdez. Let's talk about Eric for a minute. When you want to talk about a talented artist, a man with resilience, a man that will not quit, Elika. Elika sits back and rocks the house each and every time. Elika is responsible for most of the lives that go on during the Stevie B shows that he's on, and he brings the fans in with him. So not in with him, but through his phone, so they could see the real behind the scenes what we go through as artists and get that close, up and personal experience. So shout out to my man Elika. He's now working um, with our boy Ricky, who's a talented singer. Great songwriter, producer. Uh, just shout out to just shout out to that whole camp. You guys got big things coming. Also, I want to send a shout out. Uh, I was going to talk with Jerry about this, but we'll have to wait till he gets back on. We have a friend of ours named Benny Velez who's doing big things. He just did a show in Detroit, and he killed it with uh, Vision. And I forgot the girl's name. I'm so sorry. I wasn't invited to the show. I think her name was Mel. I don't remember. Put it in the comments, right? Comment on it. But it was a great show. Shout out to the guys from Lit Entertainment who put it on. Hey, what time is it right now? What time is it here, guys? 4.20. 4.20, okay. So real quick, just so you guys know, it's 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to be doing another live um, with my man DJ Inferno from Triple Threat Radio FM. And we're going to have a blast. We're going to talk about a lot of great stuff. We're going to talk about music. Shout out to my girl, KG, Kathleen, who helped set up that interview. Uh, if you're an, a DJ or a promoter or somebody out there and you want an interview, if you got a show, you got a blog, or, uh, a podcast, whatever, message us. I'll put you through the management. If it's legit, we'll come and do it for you. Uh, we want to spread the word. Good music is good music. Great vibes are great vibes. So shout out to DJ Inferno and all the team at the Triple Threat Radio FM. We're ready. We're coming for you 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. Okay, what else we got? We get any more comments on the Colognes? Roy B, Roy B, say hello, Jerry. Everybody says hello, Jerry. I'm going to say hello, Roy B, from Jerry D. Uh, anybody shouting Jerry out right now? Hey, can we send Jerry another link to another Zoom? Let's get that going right now so we can bring Jerry in. All right, so... Send them a message on WhatsApp. You're contacting. Can you call them through WhatsApp? Yeah, all right. Like, like I said, we're going to have these little difficulties until we get to ten, number 10, and then we'll have everything perfect, God willing. From your lips to God's ears. We got what? We got Leonardo DJ Lenny Santo. Tell them again. Leonardo DJ Lenny Santo Waso. He's watching. What's up, Leonardo? Como estai, signori? Who we else got, we got? Uh, we got Tracy Lee that said we got a great lineup today. Okay. Uh, say Nicole Morel, hey Joy, still waiting for my t for my shirt. Oh, Nicole, let me tell you, Nicole, I sent those T-shirts back with Robert Renee. All we got to do is organize a big payment and your address, and he's going to send them through. I love you, Nicole. Thank you. You always support us with the merchandise. It means so much to us here at Artists of Play. Thank you so much. DM me later. Call me later. We'll situate that today. Okay. Who else we got? Uh, we got Laura Escobar selling aguacate. Oh, Laura also sells aguacate. <laughs> But I think she's talking about a different aguacate she's selling. Who else we got? We got... Timothy Ryan is watching. Oh, we got Robert we Renee got Robert. in the house. Robert Renee, okay. Let's talk about Robert real quick. I absolutely am in love with his performance. When I tell you, uh, I'm seeing the footage now. And the footage from the two videos we shot is absolutely top-notch, undeniably professional. First song is going to be Hard Headed that we release. 
Second song is called Sweetwater. I could tell you that because Robert talked about it on, on air last week. Um, the footage is looking, it, it looks like a movie, right? Sweetwater looks like a movie, almost like a horror film. And I don't want to give you guys any more than that, but you want to look out for Robert Renee, one million, billion, trillion percent. Like if this was cryptocurrency back in 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, and you had an opportunity to buy Bitcoin for like whatever it was, and you wish you would have bought it, put your investment in Robert Renee right now. Believe me, get it while it's hot. This kid is young, fresh, unbelievable. He's a professor of dance and an all-around great, great guy. We got Jerry Dorville back. Yeah, let's get Jerry up. Let's let's move it up, Jerry. Any more shout-outs real quick? Yeah, we got from uh, Bernie Rosario, One Love, Joy Restivo. Bernie Rosario, One Love, right back to you, brother. Thank you so much. All right, let's let's go ahead and do this. Let me get Jerry back on real quick. Jerry D, how you doing, brother? Good, good. We lost you for a minute. You okay? Your phone died. That's so ghetto, Jerry D. You know what I want to do, Jerry? You know, it's true. It's true. It's true. What we're going to do, <laughs> what we're going to do, Jerry D, I want to show some pictures. I feel suicidal right now. Yeah, yeah I'm going to put you in a corner. Don't, suicidal is not the answer. You know, I like the corner. All right, so let's do this. You put a picture up, and I'll explain where that picture's from. Okay. All right? In no random order. Let's just have fun with it. Okay, 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 like it. All right, Jerry, so you're not going to be able to see the pictures because I'm watching the monitor. So that's the picture that's up now. Which one? To the left or the right, Jose? That one? All right, so right there, which picture is up on the screen? Right. But what are they looking at? They're just looking at me? I want to see the picture. Okay, so that picture's on the screen. So right there, that's me and Jerry had an apartment in L.A. We lived in L.A. for a while, and we had an apartment, and that's a picture of one of our boys, uh, Reggie, from Nice and Wild. And that's one of our other friends. I can't believe I just blanked out on his name. What a cool kid. I don't remember his name. Anyway, show me another picture. Right there, which one are we looking at, Jose? This picture right there? Okay, so that picture right there is it's me, Jerry D, um, Corell, rest in peace, and I can't see who that is in the background. All right, put up another picture. Let's have some fun. Just any picture right there. That's me and Jerry D at Jerry D's wedding. Give me another one, Jer uh, Jose. All right, now that's one. That, that picture is us at your wedding with a lot of people that came, and I could see... Because the screen's kind of far, I could see Dagil and me, and let me see, Jose. Nah, I need it bigger than that. That's Dagil, Jose, uh, Lucas, Alika, Eric Valdez. Oh, Eric's a dope, dope guy. And then I also see, I think that's Donnie in the picture with uh, Donnie, who's Stevie B's drummer. Which picture are we show on the screen, Jose? You got to be more clear. Okay, let's change the picture. Let's get another one. Let's see who we got here. Oh, and that's me and you with Marcella and her boyfriend, my champ, uh, Karan, in, in Las Vegas while we were recording uh, I Key and me and, and a new song we have with an art, another artist that we're going to announce in a couple of months. Give me another picture, uh, Jose, right there. Yeah. All right, Jerry, now I see a picture of me and you at Stevie B's house. I don't remember when. I think it might have been close to Thanksgiving. I'm not really sure. All right, give me, give, me, give me a couple more pictures real quick. I want people to see, you know, some of our behind the scenes. Yeah, that was thank actually, yeah, that was Thanksgiving. Um, that was like a couple of days uh, after. Yeah, after my mom passed, I know. I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to get into that zone, but yep. And then there's a picture of me and you and Stevie and Stevie's son, Amir, Azul Winter, who's working with amazing artists right now. He's a crazy, crazy dope producer. Shout out to uh, Azul Winter. Shout out to him. And then we got a picture of you and Oddballers right there. I love those. Shout out to Olo and Swig. Two dope, dope artists. Signed to artists that play. Oddballers. Who else we got? That other picture popped that one up. It's a picture of me, you, and Dr. Joshua. And we're backstage at one of the concerts. Or actually by the stage. And let, let's run the next one, Jose. This one here is a picture of us. Not us, but you. And DMC from Run DMC backstage at a concert we did together with Oddballers and DMC in Las Vegas uh, a couple of years back.
Give me one more. Oh, that's one of my favorite pictures of me and you, Jerry. That's me and you in Las Vegas. Just putting, you know, to the moon signs up. Oh, wait a minute. Give me that one last one. Go ahead. Give me that one right there. This one is one of my all-time favorites. It's a picture of me and the actual size, Jerry D. It's your actual size. I know you look bigger on TV or on the computer. You know, like the mirrors, objects in the mirror may appear larger and all that. But this picture is really the real size of you, Jerry D. And I think I was giving you a piggyback ride on Restivo Manor Island. And... I, I, love, I love your gold chains. Remember we did that competition, Jerry, and the fans got to you know, choose what your name was going to be in that cartoon? Yeah. Looking at it now, I, th I think it should be called Squeaky. Hey, could Jerry, can Jerry see these pictures too? Yeah, I can see them. Okay. Right. Yeah, so I was just asking if Jerry could see the pictures, but he gave me confirmation. So, you know, there were a lot of fun names. There were a lot of fun names... Um, people were coming up with. I like Squeaky and Squiggy and Mini Me, Junior Mint, somebody said, uh, which is a little racist, but it was hysterical. Because if they actually, if they see the real Jerry D in person, you're a force to reckon with. There's nothing Junior or Mintish about you, D Money. So this picture of me and Jerry right now, I'm probably 17 maybe 18, I don't really remember. And this is us in, in, in our living room. And this goes to show you how far me and Jerry go back. Jerry lived in the house with us. Jerry was part of our family growing up. And, you know, Jerry's a very overprotective guy by nature, but for some reason he's especially <laughs> on his P's and Q's when he's with me. And I don't even know why, I guess, because you love me. So this girl was sitting down, she opened a purse and she dropped money. I saw that she dropped money. I said, Jerry, hold on. I'm, I'm helping this girl real quick. I went, I picked up the money and I handed it to her. And I said, here, this fell out of your purse. I don't want you to lose it. It had like her money and her ID in a rubber band. And at that point, her coward, punk boyfriend, who I didn't even see, ran up from behind me and pushed me into the couch. Now, I need to draw the, I need to set the stage. So this guy came running up behind me. So I didn't hear him. I didn't see him. All I felt was getting pushed into a couch. As I hit the couch, I'm like, what the heck? Because it happened so quick. I turned around. Jerry ran. He must have jumped over the back of my legs. And when I tell you he picked up this, this, the kid had to be six foot one, but one of them thick, thick Cuban kids, right? Not, not muscular, but fat, solid. And Jerry had him up by his shirt and his neck on the wall off of his feet. <laughs> And the kid turned white real quick. And I stood up and I walked and Jerry's like, Joey, what do you want me to do? And, and Jerry's like right in his face. And I said to the guy, I said, now, why would you do something like that? He goes, no, no, I thought you were talking to my girl. I said, I understand that. But why would you put your hands on someone that you don't know who it is? And Jerry still has this guy off his feet, on the wall, by his, his neck and his shirt. And Jerry said, just give me the word. He said, just give me the word. And I said, Jerry, put him down for a minute. I looked at him. I said, are we okay? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. It was a mistake. I said, you're right. It was a mistake. I said, but who do you think you are to run up behind me and push me? You think that's the right thing to do? And Jerry was just up in his spirit. And the kid didn't want no more. So, Jerry, you're a hero. I'm going to have to watch my language on this story, Jerry, but I'll tell him if you want me to. So Johnny Quest, our dear friend of ours, is throwing the Lotus Concert, right? The Lotus Festival in South Florida. Stevie B was a co-headliner with jo uh, Boy George, right? And a few other groups. And we go backstage. It was a whole entourage. And we're waiting in Stevie's dressing room. And for some reason, we didn't all have our backstage laminates. But we've been doing this for so long that sometimes you think, hey, I don't need it. So we're there, and there's this big, big brother, like with big dreads, just a big, tall, thick dude. And we're all in the dressing room having fun. And this guy just keeps coming and asking for the security badges or the backstage badges. And Stevie's talking to him. Everybody else is talking to this guy. And then I stood up, and I'm like, listen, it's real simple. There's no need to get crazy. 
All you have to do is find a promoter and, and verify who we are. It's not a problem. We're not giving you a hard time. But when I was talking calmly to this guy, this guy looked at me and took a step in my direction. When I tell you it was a half a step, it was a half a step. And then well, that's when Jerry turned the heat up. Jerry got past me in this kid's face. And Jerry said some choice words. Now, this was a big guy to someone my size or the average size guy. But when Jerry D turned the heat up, he too cowered down. And he didn't know what to do. And there was a little cop next to him, a short little cop. And he goes, you gonna let him talk to me like that? What, 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 we gotta do something. The cop says, if I were you, I would turn around and get the hell out of this dressing room now because he means business. So while this guy was being nasty to everybody else, Jerry was still calm and, and cool. But when this guy took a step in my direction, that's when the heat from Jerry went from 50 degrees to 5,000 degrees like that. And when I tell you he, he took the spirit and the courage of this big thugged out dude, and then there was no more big courage dude. That's the story. I can't hear you, Jerry. You apologize. Well, because we talked about that. Right, because it was the right, there's no need to carry that animosity and that hostility. But some people in life overstep their boundaries. And they believe that because of their title or their badge or their job description that they can talk to other people ill-fated. And it's not right. Like those morons at the, at the driver's license bureau. I've never been yelled at so much in my life. But I'm going to call you Jerry D. You know what that D stands for in Jerry D? The regulator. <laughs> Makes no sense, but you are a regulator, Jerry D. Reach out to him at DorvilleEntertainmentLink.com or you can get him at Jerry Dorville, right? Right there on Facebook. You can come on my Facebook and search him out and send him a friend request. And if Jerry can't do something for you, he'll help you find out someone that can. Jerry D., it was my absolute pleasure and honor having you here with us today. I love you. Uh, you know Artists of Play has your back on any and everything you ever want to do. Shout out to people that love you because if they love you, then I love them. Shout out to the Dorville Entertainment Link. Shout out to the whole team here at Artists of Play. Shout out to you at home who constantly share and send love and buy merch and buy the records and add us to your playlists. Go to YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel because we're so close to a thousand subscribers. We need your help. Jerry D, we love you. You rock this interview today and we'll see you guys on the other side. Ow. Jerry D, Jerry D, get up everybody. Let's break it down. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's get that camera and take it around.